This video is going to talk about dental bridges and the different kinds of dental bridges. As you can see on this first slide, uh, there's basically three different types of bridges. We have the traditional bridge is what we typically do. We call this a three unit bridge and it fits over a, a tooth in the front and a tooth in the back to support the fake tooth in the middle. A little terminology, uh, the fake tooth, the one that's sitting on top of the gum line, that's called a pontic. And then the teeth used to hold the bridge in place, those are called either retainer teeth or sometimes they're called abutment teeth as well. Um, there's another type of bridge called a cantilever. And a cantilever is where you still have a pontic, but there's only gonna be one tooth, or maybe it could be a couple of teeth, but there is no uh, connection on the other side. It just has one, uh, one, basically a wing. The pontic is a wing hanging off the side of the, um, of the bridge. And then you have one called a Maryland bridge, which has these little wings that can be either, it shows here in this example would be metal, but they can be ceramic as well. And those little wings just go up against the lingual surfaces of the uh, teeth on either side, the left or the right, in order to help hold the fake tooth in the middle. So we're gonna go over some of the pros and cons of each one of these and the ones that we favor the most um, as we go through this. Okay, uh, the traditional bridge. This is what we're going to do a vast majority of the time. If you hear a dentist say, we're gonna do a bridge on that tooth, you can pretty much just assume they're going to cover at least one tooth to the left and one tooth to the right of the missing tooth. Okay, a um, couple of points here. Again, like they said, they call these things either abutments or sometimes they call them retainer teeth. Uh, or I'm sorry, sometimes they even call the actual part of the bridge that slips over those teeth, they call those the retainers, and these the pontics. Uh, I know there's retainers meant, you know, we use that term, you know, hold teeth together after, you know, uh, braces. And so we have some swappable terms and abutments. Uh, we use that term also in dental implants. So we do have the usage of some of the same words, but they are applied differently depending upon the procedure. Uh, but again, a three unit bridge right here, one, two, three. Imagine someone was missing two teeth. So instead of one pontic, they had two pontics and we extended one tooth in front, one tooth in the back. Now you'd have a four unit bridge. So the number of units is the number of teeth involved with uh, replacing the missing tooth. Uh, and as it kind of goes here, this example, you have the, um, the missing tooth and then the neighboring teeth, one on the left, one on the right is uh, reduced down like a typical crown prep. And then a bridge is made and is then slid over and glued into or cemented onto those two neighboring teeth. And then you get the final result. I'll say that when it comes to bridges, they show in this little nice cartoon that the gum tissue has this nice scalloped look to it. Uh, that, just, uh, now that, that doesn't just naturally occur. You know, when a tooth is taken out, usually the gum tissue goes kind of flat, like it would be kind of flat right across, or at least have maybe a small arc, not this uh, accentuated arc like we see in this diagram or like you can see right here. If we can somehow as a dentist make them a temporary that will help train this uh, gum tissue to take this shape, that'll go a long way in getting the final bridge to look like it truly is emergent, like they show this nicely fitting into place and it looks like the fake tooth uh, is just coming right out of the gum line. Uh, that takes a little bit of work to make that look right. It's not just the shape or the color of the bridge, but it's also the gum tissue that the bridge is going to be resting against that plays a big part in it. And here's an example of what one looks like, a typical back teeth uh, bridge, like all three of these are connected together. Uh, this would slide over a tooth, that would slide over a tooth, and this would be the pontic or the fake tooth in the middle. Uh, let's see what's next. Cantilever bridges. These are used occasionally, not that often. A cantilever just means, again, like that first slide showed, it's only one tooth is going to be actually holding, or at least I'll say it this way. One or more teeth are going to be holding the bridge, but there's going to be a wing or almost like a springboard hanging off to the side of where the fake tooth is going to go. So you can see in this example, they didn't prep this tooth and this tooth. They just prepped this one. They're going to slide that over there and let this fake tooth just be not connected at all to this tooth. Instead, just going to hang out there like some kind of wing. Okay. And here again is another example on a lower tooth. You know, you need to have kind of a big beefy tooth. Uh, and hold on to a smaller tooth. Or, I'm sorry, the, the fake tooth needs to be a, a smaller uh, pontic tooth. And I'll show you why that's important. When looking, looking on the internet, of course, I found examples of cantilever bridges. Uh, this would be an example 
of one that has more than just one tooth holding it in there. Uh, it's actually having three in order to hold this one tooth in place. This is a little bit of overkill if you ask me, but uh, they can do a four unit bridge. Again, one, two, three, four units with one pontic tooth and then three uh, abutment teeth or retainer teeth holding that in place. If this was truly gonna be what we're gonna, if we were gonna do this, which by the way, we wouldn't, but if we did, we'd refer to this as a triple abutted cantilever bridge. So that means there's triple one, two, three abutment teeth. So triple abutted uh, cantilever four unit bridge. Um, if we were ever gonna do more than one abutment tooth, we typically just go to two. We don't typically go to three. And it's rare that we even do cantilevers to begin with. But here in these examples, they, they kind of show you how that would work. But there's a problem with doing a cantilever bridge, which you will never see me do one on a back tooth. And it's for this reason. So here you have, and this is just a simple schematic. It looks like there's like three molars here in a row. We all do our chewing on the back. And if you put a piece of food in there, and if that piece of food should hit right here on the fake tooth, which there's no support, there's just gum tissue underneath there, and gum tissue is kind of squishy. If somebody were to apply downward pressure on here, well, you can see what happened. That when I have got the blue arrow, it looks like the, the tooth would rock up. This would have, as this pushes down, it has kind of a teeter-totter effect. It would want to try to pull this tooth up, not that it would dislodge it from the socket, but it would have an upward tension on that and possibly uh, either traumatize the ligament that's holding the root in place, but more than likely, it will cause the uh, cement holding this crown or this uh, retainer tooth on top of the natural tooth abutment, it's going to cause a lot of pulling tension and eventually that's going to pop off. So I've never actually seen anybody do a posterior or back tooth cantilever bridge. Uh, most dentists, or pretty much all dentists, are going to do at least, you know, a traditional bridge with, uh, you know, a pontic or the pontic in the middle and the two teeth prep. Like in this example, they would have prepped this tooth and this tooth and done a conventional bridge because everybody knows the physical forces at play back here where you do all your chewing is too great for this to work. So cantilever bridges are only really going to be used on front teeth. And that brings us to the last thing called a Maryland bridge. Uh, this was just made from, um, I guess, developed back at the uh, university or the Maryland Dental School. That's why it came up with that name. But basically, it's just using the lingual surfaces of the teeth to kind of make these wings that are glued onto the back of the teeth. So you don't have to reduce down the enamel on those two abutment teeth. Um, that's great that you get to uh, conserve enamel, and these can work, but you can imagine, however, when someone's chewing, if they bite into, say, an apple or something kind of hard, they pull on a bagel or a piece of beef jerky, that's putting a lot of pressure on that pontic tooth, which then transmits that pressure to this, to these wings. And those wings have got to be really, really tight in order for that to work. And if it isn't, or it gets repeatedly stressed, eventually it's going to pop off. If you do it on a bottom tooth, but you can imagine all the incising that you know when you bite into something, you're putting downward pressure and wanting to pull those wings, you know, push them downward. Uh, so Maryland bridges aren't really used that often for that reason, that they seem to fail more frequently than uh, we, you know, what we'd hope for. As you can see, though, they, could, they, they do come in metal. This is the way they've been done for many, many years, if not you know, decades. And then they have the newer ceramic ones where those are actually bonded into place. And you can imagine, you can just tell the physics right here. How strong do you think that connection is right here, right where the pontic tooth and the wing, right where those meet? In order for that to look right, you know, aesthetically, we have to make it thin. Well, the thinner it gets the more fragile it becomes. It means the more resistant. Maybe the bonding will work just fine in holding this wing onto the tooth or that wing onto this tooth. But if this area gets stressed too much, then that's going to snap and break. So these uh, Maryland bridges, again, they're only used in very special circumstances. Of the three different bridges, like I said at the beginning, we're gonna use this more traditional bridge. Um, and those other two types, the cantilever and the Maryland, Rarely use those, but occasionally you will see us put those onto a treatment plan. But if you ever hear bridge, just assume it's going to be this style. All right, thanks.